Tammy Lamora. I'm a labor and delivery nurse, and I also teach childbirth class um, for the Women and, Women and Children's Center. Um, and I'm going to do a tour for you today um, just to show you what to expect when you come in for your delivery. Um, so this is the main entrance to the hospital, um, and this is where you would come if you were coming in during the day. We have um, the, this main entrance is open from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. currently during COVID times. Um, it does change to a little bit later, um, not COVID times. It, it closes at 9 p.m., but just know that this entrance is not open at all times and you will always need to go through the ER entrance and we'll show you that also during the tour. Um, anytime you come to the hospital, you have to have your temperature taken um, for COVID and they will ask you some questions. They, um, to, and those questions change on a regular basis depending on what the questions are for this time. Um, so the elevators are down to the end of this hall when you can come in the main entrance. So make sure you go all the way down to the two elevators. So if you don't come in the main entrance to the hospital, you would want to come in the north entrance to the left of the emergency room. And that way you can come in through this area. There's only the two ways you can get into the hospital currently during COVID times. Hi. So this is the vestibule for the elevators when they when you get off. And what you're going to do is come over here and press this button. And they will say, hi, can I help you? And you say, I, I think I'm in labor or Dr. Dodge sent me in, whatever and then they'll let you in. Um, and I'm gonna let us in right now, but you will see this green light and you'll hear that noise and that means that you can go in. So this is labor and delivery. And what we do is we come up here and you just tell the nurses why you're here and then we'll get you uh, on the scale and then we'll bring you to a room. Um, so you just say, I'm here, I think my water broke or I think I'm in labor or for whatever reason and then we'll, we'll get you on the scale. So we just bring you over to this scale and we do your weight and your height. And then we either will bring you to a room for labor and delivery, or we will bring you back to the recovery room where we check to see if you're in labor or your water's broke or if you're definitely staying. So we'll start in the recovery room right now. This is the recovery room. We have two beds here. And what we use this for is like a triage area. Um, so if we're not sure if you're staying or not, we would start you off here. And what we can do is put you on the monitor just like in a regular labor room. These are the belts that go on your belly. These are the monitors that we use to monitor both your contractions and the baby's heart rate. And what we do is we put you on there and we see if you're contracting. And then if you think your water broke, we can do a special test to see if your water broke. And um, we just monitor you for an hour or so, depending on what your cervix is doing and see if it's time for you to stay or not. Once we know you're staying, then we'll put you into a labor room. We have five labor and delivery rooms and they take a long time to clean after someone goes in there. So we just wanna make sure that we're only using them for people that are actually staying. So while you're back here, um, we're gonna do a, a full head to toe assessment of you. We're gonna monitor the baby for at least a half an hour because we have to make sure your munchkin's doing okay and see if you're contracting or not and then see if your cervix changes or not. Um, mm -hmm. And based on those different things, will depend on how long it takes for you to be here if you're just not actually here to stay. Um, but it is dependent on a, quite a few things. Um, but this is where we start a lot of times just so we can um, just, just make sure that you're definitely staying before we do put you into a labor room. This is also where you would start if you were having a scheduled C-section for some reason. And I'm just telling you that because anybody that's pregnant is at risk to have a C-section at some point. So I always make sure you're aware. So you would just start here if you were having a C-section, and this is where we would pre-op um, you for the, for the surgery. Um, right here past these double doors is the OR. It's only two doors down. And as you can see, there's a red line on the floor, which just means that we um, can't go past there in our clothes that we have on now. You have to have special clothes. Um, so it's two doors down this way, and on the other side where the other rooms are, it's only a couple doors down too, so it's very close by. We also have a blanket warmer for both mom and baby, so that's really nice um, to make sure um, you guys are nice and cozy. And see those uh, dinosaurs on those cute little blankets? <laughs> and so um, at any time you think you need something like that, we can uh, make sure you're nice and cozy. So um, if you are staying, then we would bring you to a labor room. If you are not staying and it's not quite time to be here, then we would send you home and give you instructions on what to look for for labor. So now we'll go to a labor room so you can see what to expect in the labor room. Um, so this is a labor bed. Um, 
again, it has the same things as the, the stretcher did in the, in the, um, the triage area um, or the recovery room. Um, it has the bands. You have the, um, the monitors to put on for the baby. And then also this labor bed can actually come apart and um, we can do different things with it as we're um, laboring. We also have our extra um, tools we might need for labor and delivery. So this is called an exercise ball or a birthing ball, whichever you prefer. You can sit on these and labor and it helps um, relieve some of the um, pressure on your back. It also helps some of the pressure um, down low in your pelvis. Um, so we could sit on that um, while you're on the monitor. And then also if you're laying in bed, we could use the peanut ball. This we put between your legs. Um, instead of putting a pillow between your legs, we put this between your legs and this will help open up your pelvis to allow that baby to come down and out a little bit more efficiently and better. We've been using this for a couple years and it works spectacularly. Um, and so um, this, does the size of your peanut ball depends on how long your legs are. So there might be different colors that the nurses use depending on how long your legs are. But this is a wonderful thing if you're in bed and um, we will try to use these because it, it works great. Um, otherwise, we also have our um, tools that we would use for labor to help massage. Um, we have our bag of goodies. We have a whole bunch of stuff in there, but we have just things that don't um, use the vibration. These can use, we can use effleurage, and effleurage is just kind of putting it onto your skin. And what that does is it helps um, block the nerve sensations and you don't feel as much discomfort. So we can use a lot of different tools. You can see how the little, the little sticky things poke in there. Um, and we would put that on your back, on your shoulders, wherever you had discomfort. Um, and that works nicely for a lot of people. And of course, you can also use the massage tools like this. Um, and so we have all those available here. If you have anything from home that you would like to bring in, that's fine too. You can bring um, lotions, you can bring um, smelly things, as long as they don't plug in. You can't have anything that you light on fire, excuse me. You can have the things that plug in, you cannot have anything that lights on fire in the hospital. Um, so if you want um, essential oils, it's okay as long as you have a battery operated um, ionizer. The other things that we have in the labor room is the jacuzzi tub. The jacuzzi tub is in here for the mommies that are in labor. These the sanitized papers just say that everything's nice and clean in here, but this um, little seat comes out and you can sit in there and the jacuzzi tubs will go and you can be in the tub for up to an hour. We don't want to overheat you and the baby. And then you have to be out for at least an hour and then you can go back in if you really love it, which most people do. Um, and then we put this seat in here afterwards for when you deliver, you can sit down. You don't have to stand up to shower after you have your baby if you want to sit down because you might be tired, who knows. Um, so this is the bathroom and this is a one person jacuzzi tub. So daddies do not have to bring their, their swimsuits with them. We also have a chair that comes into a bed for the dads or the significant others or the family members that are with you. And this um, chair just comes completely out into a flat bed. And that way you guys can, if mom is resting, you could be resting. Um, and so we have that in all of our labor rooms. We also have the rocking chair, the sitting upright or forward leaning is your friend in labor. And so um, sitting in the rocking chair or if you feel like that that's not really comfortable, we can make this bed into like a prone position and we can actually put the feet down and um, it's really comfortable to be sitting in this position when you're in labor. And so the bed actually does some crazy things. So we can do whatever is most comfortable for you. So some people actually will lean right here and just lean over the bed like this, or they will sit on the bed with their butt here and put their feet down so they're in like the throne position. I call it the queen throne position because you are the queen until the baby comes. Um, also, this bed does come apart. This bottom part comes off in case when you're delivering, the doctor um, might want to um, be closer to your bottom, the exit or the vagina for uh, delivery. We can actually take this bed off and there's foot supports right here. So we have that also. And then every baby has their own crib. Um, this is your baby's until they go home. And I got a little diaper out so you can see a little newborn diaper because they're so cute. Um, and then um, your baby will also get a plain hat at delivery, just the, the, the pink and blue. 
And then we have people that have um, volunteers that have made some crocheted ones and we'll get you a prettier one after the baby's head is a little more clean after delivery. Um, so you can keep those if you have a dog. You would want to keep this and bring the smell home. If you need to bring a blanket home for the dog, you can do that too, or the cats. Um, and then this is your crib for the whole time the baby's here. This is the delivery table. We only set that up when you're getting close to having the munchkin. And that's just some tools for the doctor in case they need everything. Here in labor and delivery, we'd rather be extra prepared than not prepared enough. So we'll open this up and kind of get it all sterilely set up for the doctor. And they rarely use much of it, but it's good for them to have just in case they need anything. And then this is the baby warmer. Um, so we use the baby warmer um, for resuscitating the baby, but we also use it when you guys are ready to weigh the baby, um, check their um, length and their head circumference, and we also can check their oxygen on here. So um, at some point after the baby's born, we'll leave the baby on this warmer that's still in your room for about 10 minutes so we can do a full head to toe assessment and do um, those measurements because we can't do that on mama. But we do want mom to do skin to skin as much as possible after delivery um, because that way um, you are initiating the bonding and the release of the Pitocin and helping your milk come in if you want to breastfeed. Um, so skin to skin is super important and so we do recommend doing as much skin to skin as possible for the first month of life minimum. And daddy can, or your significant other, can do um, skin to skin also whenever you're busy. Like if you want to eat or something, um, your significant other can do skin to skin also. And that's really good to, for your baby to get used to your smell and your bacteria. So you get used to that part of it. The other thing is, um, for first time moms, um, the average for labor is 16 hours. And that is once you start into labor, like actually like start changing your cervix. So if you're having some cramping and some contractions, you might not actually be classified as in labor until you have cervical change. So um, for a first time mom that hasn't labored before, the average is 16 hours of actual labor. So that means you could be longer. It means you could be shorter, but the average is 16 hours. And then the other thing is um, for pushing, the average is an hour and a half for a first time mom. A lot of times um, it takes a little bit of time for you to figure out how to push um, and to push effectively so that you could take 15, 20 minutes just to figure that part of it out. Um, so don't fret about how long it takes, but just know that it's normal to take longer than an hour for especially a first time mom. Um, and we will help you the entire time. The, the labor and delivery nurses are wonderful. They're here for you and they will help you with whatever you need. Um, and, and support you with whatever choices that you want during your labor and delivery. I will talk a little bit about your pain medication options also, um, since I'm not teaching childbirth classes right now. Um, so your pain medication options are natural labor with no pain medication. And, and we have all the tools here. We have the massage tools, the relaxation tools, the birthing balls, um, peanut balls, all those kind of things here. But if you have something extra from your home that you wanna bring, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to bring your own um, music or your uh, computer to watch whatever you want to watch on your computer, that's fine. If that's helpful for you, that's fine. We do have Wi-Fi here. Just know that this is the um, oldest part of the hospital, so the walls are very thick. So sometimes Wi-Fi is a little bit sketchy, but it's okay because it does come back. It just takes time sometimes. Um, so you can do that. But the, if you not, don't want a natural delivery, and you'd like some pain control options. The other options are using the tub, um, using the um, medicine in your IV. So we can, we can give you a narcotic and um, a nausea medicine in your IV to help take the edge off of your labor, okay? Um, any narcotic or pain medicine we give you in your IV would not take your pain completely away, but it would definitely help, and it will um, take the edge off for sure. Some people, um, are very good with taking medications and it, they go to sleep and for a little while and then they slowly start feeling contractions again after a while. And some people, um, they wake up for the PTC contractions and then fall back asleep in between. Everybody is different on how medications work for them, um, but that is normal. Um, everybody's different. Um, the other option is the epidural. Epidural is um, a needle in your back, which anesthesia has to come in place. Um, and what we need to do for that is your positioning is the most important, kind of pushing your back out and making sure your lower back is pushed out for the, the doctor as much as possible. 
um, and um, getting into the right position is the most the most important part of that. After they find the right position and um, get everything into the right place, um, then they take the needle out, put a catheter in, and you get the continuous infusion of pain medication until you deliver. Most times it works great, but there are times where sometimes you feel a little bit on one side and we can, we can work with that. What we do is we kind of put you on that side a little bit more and um, try to get that, that medicine to flow with gravity and give more relief on that side. Anesthesia can also help us with that and give you extra medicine if we need that. Um, so um, epidurals work great um, if that's something that you want. Um, once you get an epidural, you have it until you deliver, so you won't be able to get out of bed, and you will also have to have um, a Foley catheter, which is a tube in your bladder, to help you pee because you won't be able to feel to pee, and we need to be able to keep that bladder out of the way so that baby can come down into the pelvis and out through the vagina. Um, so we will also do that, but um, we also will use that peanut ball and turn you side to side every hour, and that helps with the laboring process too to help keep you moving every hour or so because that helps that baby rotate down into the pelvis the right way. Um, so those are the three options for labor and delivery. We also um, want you to know that um, we want you to be having good effective contractions before you get an epidural. So um, if you come in and you say, I want an epidural, you have to kind of make sure you're in labor first before you can get that. Because if you get epidurals too early, they can slow you down and it can take a lot longer um, if you get it too early, okay? So um, there's just some things we have to do to make sure that that's safest for you at that time, but we will get you as comfortable as you want to be um, when you're ready, okay? Um, so this is labor and delivery. Now we're gonna go down to the nursery and we will show you um, what, what the nursery has. So your baby is gonna stay with you the whole time in the hospital. The only time they have to go to the nursery is um, for the 24-hour test that I just talked about, and that includes um, a Billy meter on the chest, which is a light on the chest to check for jaundice. We check their oxygen levels in both the hand and the foot to make sure that they have good oxygenation throughout their entire body. Um, we also will do a heel stick blood test that we send to, to Albany, um, which is the PKU or the newborn screening, which tests for a lot of dis different disorders. Um, that New York State makes us um, send to them. So we can check to see if there's anything that your baby might have that we can't outwardly see on your baby at birth. Um, and this, like thyroid issues, that sort of thing. Um, so just know that that is a normal part of the um, testing and we'll do that at 24 hours and that's a heel stick on the baby. Okay, so then um, as you come out of labor and delivery, this is 354, this is our overflow room. Um, so if someone needs to come for blood pressure checks or needs to hang out with us for a little while for some IV hydration or just needs to spend some quality time in labor and delivery for a little while, we have this extra room that we can do deliveries in, um, but we don't usually because it is a little bit smaller than the labor and delivery rooms, but it has everything else we need to um, watch you for a little while or watch the baby for a little while. And then we have the nursery that we'll go to next. All right, so then you have the hearing room. So your baby will also have to have a hearing test before they go home. And so we have this machine that goes around their ear and we put a little gel on their head and it, sh it tells us if your baby can hear well. It's um, a very cool test, but it does have to be done before the baby goes home. So that's something else we do around the 24 hour mark. We like to wait till at least 24 hours old to do that because they could have um, blood, vernix, just some goo in their ears, and then we just want that to come out before we try to do their hearing test. Um, next, this is the main nursery. Um, your baby probably won't be in here very much, but i just like you to know where it is and just know that they could be in here once in a while. But when they do come into the 24-hour test, we also check their weight, so we're gonna check their weight. And this is the millimeter test that we do. It just flashes light onto their skin. We do it three times on their chest. And then it tells us um, how risk, how much risk they have for getting jaundice. It tells us their number of their um, billimeter. Um, and then the other things you might see in here, this is just a warmer, just similar to what was in the labor and delivery room. If your baby needs extra support or be in the nursery to be watched a little more closely, 
for breathing issues or very, very low sugar issues, that kind of thing. And then they might kind of hang out here on this warmer and this warmer will warm the baby up to the proper temperature but not overheat the baby, which is important. We want the babies to be warm, but not too hot. Um, and we can also put them on the cardiac monitor and we can check them out closely. Um, but like I said, we don't usually um, come into the nursery very much. The, the babies are with their parents or the, the family as much as possible. We want them to do as much um, rooming in or staying in the room with you guys so you guys can see if you have questions on the baby and make sure you learn about your baby before you go home. And, and so that way you're comfortable going home with your baby. So you probably, the baby won't be in here very much, hopefully. So this wall is, um, these are footprints that people have posted um, of their baby's footprints with their name and date of birth. If this is something that you're interested in, we have this through the foundation of CVPH and there is a cost to it. Um, you get one tile for the wall and then the one tile goes home with you guys. So some people do it, some people don't, but if you want information, we can give that to you while you're here at the hospital. So this is one of our postpartum rooms. And so um, this is a little bit more comfortable bed than labor and delivery's bed because it's not a labor bed. It doesn't have to be as functional as that. Um, so most people will find this a little more comfortable. Um, and then also we have this nifty another chair that comes out into the bed. And so postpartum is for you guys to rest, bond, and get used to your baby. So there is a bed, there's a bathroom, and there's a TV. And we just want you guys to spend some time together and get used to each other and see if you have questions and see what you need help with while you're here in postpartum. Um, so like I said, you can stay 26 hours, you could stay two to three days. Everybody is different. But that's what this area is for. Um, and you'll stay here for that time. So this is the other side of postpartum, three east. Um, and I just wanna show you the rooms over here so you can just see the rooms on this side also. So same kind of thing, there's a, a bed for mom, there's a chair for your significant other family member, comes out into a bed, um, and then we have the bathroom with the shower. Um, so you can recuperate over here also. So it all depends on um, staffing and whatnot of which side you'll be on, but um, those are your different options. It's really just for you to try to get a little bit of rest, but also to get used to your baby. So um, here, uh, after the baby's born, the baby gets two bracelets. Mommy gets a bracelet, and then the significant other or family member that you choose gets the fourth band. These bands all have the same numbers, um, so we know whose baby's who. They also will have a, a security tag with um, uh, on the umbilical cord clamp that is like a kind of like a low jack, so the baby doesn't leave the unit at all. Um, so when you go near a door, you'll hear a clicking noise, and also the door will not open if the baby is going by. Um, because for safety purposes, we want to keep the babies here on the unit. Um, so in some places, you might have to be let out. In some places, um, you might have to press a button. So we'll show you that right now. So on 3 East, you have to be let out. You can't push a button. And then on the main floor, we have a button that you have to press in order to get out of the unit. So we'll go, we'll get off the unit and we'll go show you the lactation clinic and um, the waiting room. All right, so this is the main doors that we came in when we first got here. As you can see, there's a sign that says, please press the green button multiple times um, to get out. Um, so we're gonna press the green button and this is just letting you out. And you can hear that noise and that shows us that we can get out of the green with the green button. So then we go through these doors and these are the elevators to get down off of this floor, but also down this way is the lactation clinic. So if you have to come back after you deliver, um, it's good to know where the clinic is. So the last room on the left, there's a green sign on the top. You probably can't see it from here, but it does say lactation clinic. And that's where you would go if you needed any extra support from them. We also have a visitor's lounge right here to the left. And, um, that is for when we have, um, when we allow extra visitors, we have that. Currently, um, during COVID times, you're only allowed to have one visitor, and that visitor must stay with you the whole time and kind of stay in your room. They're not allowed to go into the cafeteria or the gift shop, just keep um, everything safe as much as possible for the rest of the staff. So once um, COVID restrictions are lifted, there is a lounge for family members to stay. Um, you can only have 
once COVID restrictions are lifted, you can only have four people in your labor room at one time. Um, postpartum, we do try to limit it closer to two because the rooms are a little bit smaller. All right, so thanks for listening to me. And if you have any further questions, you can just ask your providers at your office visit. Otherwise, we look forward to providing very good care to you and making your experience very memorable and enjoyable. Have a great day.